Uh, I'm having arrived. I hereby call the Finance Committee uh, meeting to order for Monday, August 19th, it being at 7 p.m. I um, want to welcome our newest colleague, Mr. McGarry, Councilor Large John. Thank you very much. It's, uh, we look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mr. President. Madam Clerk, agenda number one, please. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of total grant funds in the amount of $312,615.40 from Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program MVP Action Grant to Mayor's Office Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program MVP Action Grant Fund. Invited Honorable Mayor Moses Rodriguez, Mary Monahan, Associate Director of Business Development, Fuss and O'Neill, Julian Busa, PhD Environmental Scientist, Fuss and O'Neill, Troy Clarkson, CFO. Good evening, Mr. Clarkson. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, thank you for being here tonight. Mr. Clarkson, good evening. Good evening, Mr. President. The mayor just said have fun, so I guess that means that I'm up. Uh, uh, we, we do have uh, Paul Romano from the mayor's office, who's our grants coordinator, and some folks from Fuss and O'Neill. But as you can see, this is uh, a fairly substantial grant. It does include a city match, and, and uh, as I stated in my letter, we're, uh, we're prepared to, to meet that match. It's, it's mostly, uh, mostly time of city employees. The grant is part of the governor's MVP program. And this particular grant is designed to provide some hydrologic modeling and to really equip the city to better deal with uh, potential flooding and extreme weather events. Thank you, Mr. Claxton. Any questions for the CFO? Entertain a motion. Just oh, do you have a, uh, a Council quick, Cruz, yeah, Just a quick question, and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to ask you this before. You said this is a match. Yeah. from the city uh, th there is a match required yeah uh, hundred and two thousand six hundred and forty eight dollars and forty cents and we're gonna take that out of the so most of it uh, we it will be a, the, the amount that's required for actual match will be available funds from within the budget but most of it's actually if you look on the spreadsheets it's time for city employees okay. so it, it's salaries that we already budget for thank you motion right. recommend favor uh, second. second council Beauregard please on the motion oh. I, I'm sorry, if I could ask uh, Julianne to come up here for just a quick moment, thank you. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming out here. I just wanted, you know, not to be difficult or anything, am I to understand that communities that acquire such grants, does this make it, um, how would I say it, a better opportunity for economic development in the future if they are more prepared for situations? I mean, I'll cite, you know, extreme examples, um, communities where they're losing their waterfront, et cetera, or as um, you know, they're talking about in Boston and other communities. Does this make us, how would I say it, help, um, I'm all I can think of as the good housekeeping seal of approval, but anyway, something on that idea for um, better um, opportunities for economic development in our community. Sure, uh, I'm Julianne Buso with Boston O'Neill. Uh, in answer to your question, the MVP program, um, by virtue of the piece that the city has already completed, the planning process, the city has become an MVP certified community, which makes Brockton eligible for uh, basically additional points on a lot of different state funding opportunities. So in that point, there's the, that seal of approval. Um, but this funding program also, it's, it's really geared at climate resiliency, and this project was designed to further both the goals of reducing flooding risk in the city uh, and also thinking about economic development, and in particular, matching those two together in areas uh, like the Westgate Mall area and the Kmart Plaza, where flooding has been a problem, but also there's hopes for future economic development planning. Uh, and so this, this project is intended to do the, the first pieces of that work, and it will also set the stage for future action grant funding to then implement whatever recommendations come out of this project. Thank you very much. I was, that's what I was hoping to hear, so thank you. On yes. the motion, Councilman Castro, please. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you for being here. I'm looking at page six of Fuss and O'Neill's letter to Paul Amano dated July 16th. Task nine, develop economic development vision and action plan optional. And then it goes through three subtext tasks under their document ex ex existing conditions, market research, resilient redevelopment vision plan. They're all marked as optional. <coughs> Explain this to us, if you will. 
Um, I wish that I had a more final answer for you. The reason that they're marked as optional is because EEA, the funding agency, chose not to fund that task that was part of the original grant proposal. So we've included them as optional here. Um, it's a task that the city can choose to activate at some time if funding is available, but it is not included in the grant funding that came from the state. So at this point, if we wanted to do these task nine items, we would have to pay for it ourselves. That's correct. And what would we do, seek a quote from you? Uh, there's actually a price on <laughs> page 10 that's associated with that task, and it is $83,395.40. Oh, I see that. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Any other questions on the motion? Seeing none, we have a motion that was properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the full council. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, motion carries. Favorable back to the full council. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, number two, please. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of up to $20,000 from Plymouth County District Attorney's Office, fiscal year 2017, Violent Gang and Gun Crime Reduction Program Grant, Project Safe Neighborhoods, to Brockton Police Department, fiscal year 17, Violent Fiscal Year seven, 2017, Violent Gang and Gun Crime Reduction Program, Project Safe Neighborhoods Grant Fund. Invited John Crowley, Chief of Police, Troy Clarkson, CFO. Councilors, uh, Chief Crowley had uh, indicated to me that he unfortunately wasn't able to join us tonight. Uh, and also uh, the city planner, Mr. May, had, had contacted me. He actually had a, uh, a pre-scheduled uh, commitment that he couldn't be here as well, just for information purposes. But we do have Mr. Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. I do believe uh, that the city has received, you, you know better than I, that this grant before, uh, but the, uh, the attachment is pretty extensive with uh, all of the the tasks and it's a collaborative effort between the uh, the city the Commonwealth and the United States Attorney's Office so pretty Take a motion for favor recommendation second on the motion counselor uh, thank you um, I am um, I just was wondering any matching funds on this one I, I, do, I do not believe so no okay I just I didn't see anything but I just want to ask yeah thank you thank any you. other questions on the motion just point, just point of information. Council we Cruz, please. The, the, just want to note the chief did send a captain tonight. We do have police representation yes. here, so just wanted the public to know that. So thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank Duly you. noted. There's a motion on the floor. It's properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the council. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, that motion carries. Favorable back to the full council. Number three, please. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of the total grant in the amount of $46,971 from Executive Office of Health and Human Services, Department of Mental Health, Fiscal Year 2020, mm -hmm. Massachusetts Jail Arrest Diversion Program, to City of Brockton Police Department of Mental Health, Fiscal Year 2020, Massachusetts Jail Arrest Diversion Program Fund. Invited John Crowley, Chief of Police, Troy Clarkson, CFO. Mr. Clarkson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, again, this is uh, this grant ac actually is from the, as you can see, from the Department of Mental Health. There is no required match, and uh, the scope is included there uh, within your packet. Any questions? Motion recommend favor. Second. Second. Motion on the floor is properly second. It's a favor re recommendation back to the council. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, that motion carries. It's favorable back to the full council. We're going to take a, a one minute recess, please. Back in Arisa's council, I mean, back in uh, number four, Madam Clerk, please. Ordered that the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed Housing Development Incentive Program, HDIP, Tax Increment Exemption Agreement, TIE, for 93 Center Street between the City and 93 Center Street, LLC. Invited Troy Clarkson, CFO, John O'Donnell, Chairman of Assessors, Rob Bay, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Ted Carmen, Concord Square, Planning and Economic Development. 
Clarkson. Mr. President, thank you. This is the first of three tie agreements that are before the council tonight. With your indulgence, I have prepared a PowerPoint presentation that gives an overview of all three, if I might. Thank you, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and counselors. It's a pleasure to speak before you tonight to, um, to present to you and answer any questions you have on these three tie agreements. They are a very important economic development tool that I know the city has used uh, in the past. So these three agreements were presented to you on the same evening, just really for ease of, of review. Uh, so that conceptually we can talk about the, the agreements in the abstract and then obviously we have representatives of each of the developers as well as uh, John O'Donnell, our uh, chairman of the Board of Assessors here and, and of course the mayor, uh, should you have any questions on the projects specifically. But for the benefit of the council and certainly of the public watching at home, uh, thank you to Terry from the IT department for helping us out here. Thank you very much, thank you. Uh, so, tie agreements in general, uh, as it says on the slide, they encourage investment through tax incentives. Uh, as we'll see uh, in a moment with all of the agreements, I think probably the most important component of this sort of tax incentive agreement is that it builds on the value that exists. And so, uh, the city never loses any money. What we do is share in the new value that's created and allow the developer to reinvest those funds in that project. Uh, one of the things I will mention that's not in your uh, packet is one of the things that we did working with the assessor's office and the developers and the redevelopment authority, we have tightened up the filing requirements for these so that uh, we now have, uh, an, when a developer is interested in a tie agreement, and I'm happy to share this with you, it's a very simple one page uh, document, but we have formalized the filing requirements for a tie agreement so that anyone that is interested in it knows the rules uh, of the operation and the filing requirements are the same. And so in order to be even considered by the mayor's office, uh, interested developers have to comply with those list of documents and, and then we send it along to the mayor for consideration. Thank you, Terry. So th the tie stands for tax increment exemption and as I mentioned a minute ago, that really comes in two parts, and so there's that baseline value that we'll see as we graphically show you these three separate agreements in a minute. And so the money that the city collects now in taxes stays the same uh, and, and will never go below that. Uh, what the agreement does is agree to share in the new value that's created. Uh, the time can be flexible, as you'll see. There's three sites that are before you tonight. 90, next slide, please, Terry. Thank you. Uh, 93 Center Street, 127 Center, and 19 Main Street. We can certainly, uh, when we get to them, to discuss those specific addresses. Uh, so for 93 Center Street, and, and each of these were considered uh, in and of themselves, and so the terms uh, and the exact nature of the agreement varies because it was based on meetings and negotiations with each of the developers. So for this property, uh, we use the uh, current assessed value of $566,000. Uh, the estimated future value, and that's com that is developed uh, collaboratively, but based on what the plans are for that specific building, uh, some formulas that are used in terms of the amount of, of units. These are all market rate units, by the way, in all three of these developments. And so we take all of those conditions, whether or not there's commercial property, and based on that, come up with uh, an estimated future value. It's important to note, not only for this project, but for all of them, uh, all of these numbers are estimates. So the, depending on market conditions and what the actual build out is, the, est the actual future value of this building could be more than 4.96 million, it could be a little less. But this stage of the, the agreement is used as a, it's used as a tool to negotiate the agreement because as you'll see, the, the, the actual tie agreement is based on percentages, not real dollars. And so the actual amount of the taxes to the city and the taxes that are uh, granted back to the developer depend on those actual numbers and will be determined 
on a yearly basis based on whatever the tax rate is. We do know though that the current taxes for this property are just a little less than $8,800 a year and based on the, the formulas that we talked about, the future taxes will be approximately $146,000 a year. This particular property, a 44 market rate units, uh, and on this one, I'm sorry, the other two were a market rate, there are 11 affordable units. So what we tried to do that's different than what you might have seen before, next slide, Terry. Uh, next one after that, I'm sorry. I think better than any uh, words that I can share with you or the actual uh, agreement itself, this is probably the most powerful image that we can show you and we've prepared this for all three of them. So what, you, as you can see uh, in 2019, that's the current tax income to the city from this development. And as time goes on, the actual agreement is represented uh, in in that graph. And so the, the blue dots and the blue line that has a slight incline represents the amount of taxes collected by the city. Uh, the, the orange line is what the taxable value is estimated to be based on the increased value of the building. And then that space between the blue and the orange lines is the amount of the tax exemption. So that's the amount of money that the developer will save through this agreement. But again, uh, to repeat what I've said a couple of times, uh, the city is always collecting more than it does on the building now. So it's, uh, from a financial perspective, I believe a win-win situation because the city's uh, tax income increases, the developer gets money that they can then monetize and reinvest in the building. At the end of it, we're getting 150-ish thousand dollars a year in tax revenue, and we have new residents living in the downtown, uh, shopping, eating, recreating, hopefully in the downtown. So that, in a nutshell, I think, shows the value of a tie agreement. Now, these next couple ones are for the subsequent agreements, Mr. President, shall I? No, we, 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 we'll stay on this specific agenda item right now. Any questions okay. relative to uh, what Mr. Claxon had said, 93 Center Street? <coughs> I know we have Mr. O'Donnell here as well. We're going to go with Councilor Large McGarry, followed by Cruz, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm sorry I didn't bring my copy uh, uh, that I printed out of, of the values mm -hmm. and, and how the growth goes up, but from 2019 till when, do, before we really start to see any kind of an increase in the tax taxes out of that building. Okay, can you go back to that last slide? So, Thank you. if you look at the, uh, yeah, yeah, but I can't, I can't really read the years, and that that's my concern. Is it's great because we're talking a 20 year basically before we see the full uh, effect of the growth in, uh, of this building. But how many years, I mean, because you've got oh, what, five years at, at, at just the ta current tax rate or whatever the tax rate is for the next five years, is that it? it by, by this graph, and I believe by the agreement, and John, you can help me out here, it's, it's uh, 2022 when we start to see uh, increased income to both the city and the developer based on the completion of the building. So, th so three years, because you're, you're saying that it's going to be done, though, I mean, it's, it looks like the actual structure is going to be ready to start um, inhabiting within a few years and not, and right. not the well, three that's years. What I'm so, b based on our estimates, and again, these are only estimates, but uh, sorry, I don't want to have my back to the other counselors. We do anticipate that within a couple of years, the project will be complete and taxed at that full amount. It could happen a little before, it could happen a little after. It, and it'll be, ta it'll be taxed at at the, uh, dis no, I, I hate to use the word discounted, but decreased on uh, the, uh, the tie rate of um, uh, the first upgrading is, is to 50%, um, I think, of something, isn't it? Uh, it's 100% for, what oh, looks like a percentage of 80%. Each of these are different. E correct. I, just, I, just I think I sure have I the, the proper information on this one. 93 Center Street. Good evening, Mr. O'Donnell. Thank you, Mr. O'Donnell. I'm just, 
I just want everyone to know that while we certainly want growth in Brockton, I want people to understand that we're not going to see the full effect of this, of these, this growth in these buildings for, for 20 years. You know, and, and in that entire time, our, inf our police, fire, and schools are going to have to absorb it, the impacts of these buildings at the much lower uh, discounted rate. It's certainly more than what the builders are paying now. Well, granted. Mm -hmm. Granted. So the first two years of all the projects uh, under construction, they just paid a base value. And then depending on the agreement, yeah. be it 70, 80 percent, 70 percent. That was all changed. Like 47, Ple uh, 47 Pleasant Street, when you guys did the tie agreement for Joffrey, originally his estimated value was like 1.4 million. It, it, last year was 2.4. They changed the value for the last year higher. We can, you know, we can't take these numbers, but the percentages won't change. The discount, the discount percentage. And I, and I apologize because obviously tonight's my first night. I wasn't part of the original Thai agreements. Um, and I'm sorry that Mr. May's not here because I, I, uh, most of my questions would be for Mr. May. Mr. May, honestly, mm -hmm. he's not involved in this process. This is when the zoning was changed and things like that? Oh, no, all that. But I'm saying as far as the Thai agreements, that's just the final. Right. But, but that's I'm coming in from that stage uh, because I, I had concerns about those kinds of issues. Um, I certainly understand that this, obviously, like you said, it's more than what the current property is providing, but it is also has is going to have significant impacts on the, first, the, the first city. Year the first year it's completed, they'll pay 40% of the tax. So say the value is $4 million that year. They're going to pay 4% of that. 40% of that. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. McGarry, uh, Council Cruz, followed, followed by Farwell, please. Actually, John, if you could stay up there. By the way, you look really good in your tie and shirt. So. Thank you. <laughs> so, first three years they pay the current, current first assessment. Two. First two. That or until, once it's inhabited, though, if they finish construction. And it's it, early, yeah. It, it'll go. Once it's inhabited, that's when the clock starts, basically. Exactly. And the uh, now, does the tie go with the building, or does it go with the project? Or so, five years from now, Mr. Carmen says, you know, oh, I can, you know, it's attractive to sell this, and and I get what you're saying. Uh, we already know that uh, you know, South Shore Developments building is probably worth more than what we looked at. So, we're basing these on percentages and estimates right now. But let's say the building, uh, I don't have it with me. We're looking at the. the you're thinking it'll be worth about 5.4.9. Let's say the market stays as it is and it's worth, he finishes the building and it's worth 6.2. So that, that dollar amount jumps way up. Exactly. Five years from now, the owner of the building decides, you know what, I'm going to sell this. Does the tie go away? No. No, the tie stays with the building. So the tie stays with the, it it's actually becomes a part of the, the yes. deed. It, it goes with the building the whole time. It'll go with the oh, building. Yeah. Same as the TIFs go with the property. Right. The TIFs go with the business. Well, they, oh, the business. Same thing. <laughs> well, but that's a different, that's, my, that's why I want to, in other words, we give, uh, we give a TIF through the years to uh, Evans Engineering. Um, if he moves, that TIF goes to Evans Engineering. No. No, it's no. no. I, I think to uh, answer your question, Councillor, the, the, the agreement is between the city of Brockton and the entity that's developing. So there is no, I, I just went through it very quickly. I don't see any assignability clause in this agreement. So I, I would say, and, and well, Shannon's not here, but uh, that the agreement is between the city and this 93 center LLC. So if the building sold, and as part of that sale, that LLC was sold, then the tie would continue. But there certainly is the possibility, although a small likelihood, mm -hmm. that if the building were sold and another entity took over, that the tie agreement could, could go away. Mr. Clarkson, if we could, through you and through the mayor, 
uh, just get something before a final vote from the solicitor's office Absolutely. indicating if it runs with the land or if it's specific to the owner. Yeah, Thank you. Because when we've talked in a t like a TIF in the past, part of a TIF as opposed to the tie, and some of this is for people at home, is that the business agrees to add 20 employees through the next five years. So the, the TIF right. is with the business. It, it, exactly. So unlike zoning, that actually a zoning, a special permit, correct, uh, goes with the property. Right. This Where agreement variance, is between the city and the developer. Mm -hmm. So I think there is the possibility, but I'll, I'll, we'll so determine that. It would, be, it would sure. depend on how that how that building was sold, if it was sold. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. That's what I, I wanted to know. And so, the we're looking at on on the the model shows three years, but as soon as the building's occupied, the clock starts. Right. Right. And, okay. and in this particular agreement, the exemption as you'll see on page three is 60 percent for 20 years. So some of them are graduated. This one is consistent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Uh, Council Fowl, followed by Nicastro, please. Uh, let me let me start off by mentioning that I think 93 Center Street, when it was taken by eminent domain, I believe the owner was compensated at about $1.1 million by the BRA. Is that accurate? And I know Mr. Jenkins is here. Is that, is that correct? I think $1, that... One million twenty thousand. What, $1,020,000. Okay. Okay, so I guess my first question is, why are we using about 60 uh, or 55 percent of the value that we paid for it as the base value? I mean, I know that's the taxable amount that's in the assessor's record, but since this agreement is negotiable, why wouldn't we use the figure that we actually paid for the building? Well, I think the most reliable figure was to use the assessed value. I'd well, I, I, I would say the most reliable figure is the, is the price that the BRA must have very carefully examined when they decided to cut that check to the gentleman that owned the building. So it just seems odd to me that that we would use a base value of 566000 when, in fact, the BRA paid $1,020,000 for it. So as you said, Councillor, it is, it, it, it's part of a negotiation, so that's no, what... I, and that's exactly where I'm going. And, and bear with me, folks, because it's interesting to me. And by the way, I agree with tax increment exemptions. I, they are a very valuable tool. They're used all over the state. I've done research in some other communities that have used them. It's interesting to me, though, that, though, that if a homeowner buys a half a million dollar house in Brockton and wants to come into the city and send kids to school and everything else, we do nothing for them. Mm -hmm. All we do is send them a quarterly tax bill, water and sewer bill, and refuse pickup fee. And I, I, I just find that kind of ironic. The other question I have is the legal status of this building. And one of my colleagues did some research today, and I understand that pending in Plymouth Superior Court or in the land court, there is a dispute about the eminent domain, eminent domain taking. And in fact, there was a motion to dismiss that, but that hasn't been ruled on by the judge. So aren't we in kind of a, a, a holding pattern here as to what could happen? Because if the judge doesn't dismiss the case, now I suppose you could have some protracted litigation. And I, I'm not an attorney, but I would think that would be a consideration as we discuss this tonight. Very valid question. I anticipated that question, Counselor. So I met actually with the developer, Ted Carmen, before tonight's meeting, and he provided uh, a, a fairly detailed update on that topic to me. And he's, he's here with, with your permission, Mr. President. He can certainly provide you that same detailed update. What I would suggest for purposes of your consideration of this agreement tonight, that Council Farwell is correct. There are some pending legal actions. And that should you think in concept that the agreement is sound, that you simply vote to approve it uh, pending the outcome of, of that case so that if for some reason the court does rule that the taking was somehow improper, uh, the agreement goes away. But w with your permission, I'll ask Mr. Carmen to come up and well, answer I, questions specifically. With all due respect, I, I think the only person that's going to decide this is the judge. I mean, he, he, may marry, he may very well have been in court when arguments were presented, but I thought the legal action was between the owner of the building and the BRA. Am I incorrect? Isn't the legal action against the BRA? It's not against Mr. Carmen. Right, but as the person most affected by it, as the, the, the person to buy it, I, you can hear from him or not. I, I was just suggesting I, that he I, might I have something, I mean, something he, to add. He obviously 
Ted has a vested interest in it. So right. I'm, I'm more concerned about what is the judge going to say? And of which course, way could this go? It, and right, and as with any case, it could go either way, which is why I suggested that you consider the agreement on its merits and a, a vote contingent upon the ruling of the judge, I think, protects the city in that, again, should the judge agree that the taking was somehow improper, uh, the city's under no obligation to offer uh, any sort of tax agreement. Well, well, if it passed council, it would be binding. What, no, and, and I don't purport, Councillor, to tell you your business, but again, I think if you took a vote that conditioned it based on the outcome of the court ruling, then that wouldn't necessarily be the case. Right. Well, I, I want to go on and pick up on something my colleague, Councillor uh, McGarry, mentioned. We've given away millions in TIFs and tax increment mm -hmm. exemptions. Uh, the Boston Globe ran a story about it. Uh, I'm not going to name all the people, but they've been 1.2 million to one vendor and over a million to another. So, and, and that's money left on the table. And we all sit here and we talk about the woes of the school system and we talk about the woes of public safety services and we talk about streets that aren't reconstructed. And again, I'm not against having some type of an agreement with these properties in the downtown area, but I really think we have to examine long and hard how much are we willing to give away. Now that, that projected 1.2 million uh, for 93 Center Street, we don't know 20 years out what that building is going to be worth. And we have no idea what the tax rate will be. So if the tax rate is higher and the value of that building is higher, that $1.2 million is going to be significantly higher. And I, I think that's a very valid assumption on our part. So because this has been used around the state, I looked at several different agreements that have been done recently. One is in Framingham, and by the way, the Framingham agreement is much more comprehensive than the one we have in front of us. It's got different recitals, it, got, it has contingency plans. If for some reason the development falls through, it doesn't meet target uh, expectations. And very interesting, and this one in Framingham is much more substantial than the one at 93 Center Street, they only went seven years. Framingham only went seven years, and their percentage of exemption was not for 20 years. You know, Brockton's had a bad experience with 20-year decisions. We're locking in a mayor and a city council for 20 years with, with something like this. Um, so again, let's take a look at Andover. Andover had a fairly substantial, fairly substantial uh, project and they did tax increment financing and exemptions and they only did six years and it ranged from 100 percent in year one then 90 then 80 then 80 then 75 and then 75 and the base value of that particular property was 15 million so it was a much much more substantial project <coughs> with with much greater value and then Lowell Lowell's a gateway city they did a similar agreement with an entity in Lowell, and they only went 10 years. And they went 60, 60, 55, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 20, and then finally, uh, excuse me, 10 percent in year 10. So I guess where I'm going with this, I think we should do something, but I think what's being proposed, 20 years, 60 percent, is too much. I think it needs to be scaled back. I think it ought to be no more than 10 years. Preferably, I'd rather see seven or eight years. But I don't think we can leave that kind of money on the table. And I, I know the argument is, and I agree with Mr. O'Donnell, well, it's going to be more valuable than it is now. Well, I mean, using that philosophy, if somebody comes along and offers you just even a modest increase in value, you're going to jump at it. And I know people are thirsty for progress in Brockton, but uh, th this is just too rich for 93 Center Street. And I might add, I feel the same way about the other two projects. Uh, we, we've really got to take a hard look at, at turning away substantial amounts of money while at the same time embracing these tax increment exemptions. And I think there should be a, a blend between what's fair to the developer but what's fair to the taxpayer, the resident of Brockton. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Chandler. you, Council. Council DeCastro, followed by Lally, please. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Clarkson. Thank you for being here. And Mr. Carmen as well, and Mr. O'Donnell. Um, I did some research as well, um, and I am very familiar with TIFs. TIFs stimulate business development, t uh, ties stimulate development of, of a housing, multi housing. And I looked at tie agreements in Pittsfield, Lowell, Fall River and Worcester through the magic of the internet today. And of course, the state program provides for a maximum of 20 years. None of the communities that I looked at who have tie agreements or are negotiating them went as long as 20 years. The, the longest I saw was 15 years. Most were seven to 10. So I am concerned about the term, about whether um, what we're doing tonight should, whether we should go as long as 20 years, okay? I am concerned about that. I also did some research today on the imminent domain proceeding against the Redevelopment Authority. I did speak with Mr. Jen Jenkins, who is here this evening, and learned that the lawsuit is pending um, among the preliminary um, motions that get made at the beginning of a case was a motion to dismiss, which the judge took under advisement not too recently. And I am uncomfortable with going forward on this financing without that case being resolved. I know that typically challenges to eminent domain go to the valuation, the amount that was paid to the former owner. But as I discussed with Mr. Jenkins, I'm also aware of a line of cases in Massachusetts, one specifically in Marlborough that I'm very familiar with, where the, uh, the uh, municipality was challenged in the eminent domain because it ended up giving it to a private developer or selling it to a private developer. And in that case, the, uh, the challenging former owner won. And so I'm, I'm nervous about proceeding with this financing until that case is resolved. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is TIFs in recent years, the terms on them are much shorter. I understand that for the most part they're not more than 13 years, but even a 13-year TIF is more like a 10-year because the last couple of years are a reduction of only 10%. So that uh, also bodes, it supports my, my my concern that 20 years is too long, and so I throw that out to you. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Lally, followed by Beauregard, please. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, my uh, throat's a little messed up. Um, I do. I do have to say, uh, you know, what my my colleague from Ward Four said is is interesting. You know, 20 years compared to the others, but I do, I do feel like you know this is not the same project happening everywhere across the state. I, I don't know the particulars of any of the other situations. They could be, they could be completely different. Um, so this isn't, this isn't something that I can just, you know, say, okay, well, they did it here, they did it there, different. We've got to manage our city and what our city can do. Um, and I know it is, I know it is tempting to look at the graph and to see that there is, you know, there is a line where someone's making more money. You know, oh, well, if, if the city were operating, you know, without this, we'd be uh, leaps and bounds ahead of where we would be. But we wouldn't be. This isn't, this isn't money that we're, we're leaving. This is money that we just wouldn't be getting at all. Um, this is not something that is, is optional that we can do just because we want to hand it out. This is something that you know, this kind of program is in place to allow these developments to go forward and to allow people to invest. Because when this project proceeds with this kind of, of city support, it allows other projects to proceed and builds and builds. And those projects don't necessarily have to have a tie agreement. <coughs> it's it's, a, it's a, ri a rising tide lifts all boats. It's That's what it is. This one, we're not making as much as we would if there were no tie agreement on paper, but if there were no tie agreement, we wouldn't be making anything. So that's that's what it comes down to. And we're, we're, we're seeing a modest increase here, but we will be seeing bigger increases as other people come in and invest and you know continue to improve the city. So I just wanted to 
to make my thoughts make my thoughts known and put that out there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Lally. Council Beauregard, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Clarkson. I mean, this is actually directed at all here, and this is um, no reflection on you, Mr. Clarkson, because I think you've been kind of put on the spot, and I believe that my colleagues and I agree when generally when people are invited to come, and for example, in this case, it was the city planner, I mean, the city planner is not the only one in his office. He could have sent an associate. And there may, may have been a little bit more of an explanation on how they arrived at all this. And having been monitoring these different proposals over the years and um, this whole new happening with opportunity zones focused on areas like downtown Broughton, for example, that come from the Fed and then go down to the state, uh, one of the things that they do focus on is the developers more so than the communities themselves and where they benefit the communities. I mean, the mentality is always if the developer comes, then that improves the community, but it does not take into account all of the different components. I mean, myself, I'm excited about seeing something positive, but at the same time, I completely agree with um, Council Fowler. Um, we have to think about our schools. We have to think about our infrastructure. And um, so it just seems that uh, we could always be looking at um, a more advantageous approach to all this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Any other councils for Mr. Clarkson, Mr. Carmen, and Mr. O'Donnell? Entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move to postpone this to the FinCom meeting in. October, with the hope that we have a uh, an, uh, a decision from the judge. Which FinCom in October, Council? First or second? A second. Second FinCom in October, in the hope that we have uh, a decision from the judge reference to litigation pending. Right. As well as an opinion from the solicitor's office pertaining to if yeah, it carries with the right. land or the owner. Yes. yes. There's a motion. It was seconded by who? I'm sorry. Councilor Darincourt, thank you. Yes. So there's a motion on the floor. It was properly seconded to postpone to the second FinCom in October. All in favor? Raise your hand, please. You got to put them up a little higher, guys. Anybody, uh, anybody opposed to that? One. Okay. It's going to be postponed till the second fin come in October, Madam Clerk. Thank you. We'll go on to the next agenda item, please. Ordered that the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed Housing Development Incentive Program (HDIP) Tax Increment Exemption Agreement (TIE) for 127 Center Street between the City and 127 Center Street. Sorry, Center Corner, LLC. Invited Tori Clarkson, CFO, John O'Donnell, Chairman of Assessors, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Attorney James Burke. Good evening. Mr. President, so this is, and members of the Council, uh, this is the second of three uh, agreements. As you can see, uh, this one is, has, a, has a base value of 297475 That actually represents the assessed value minus the estimated demolition costs for that building. Uh, the upside, we believe, estimated for this project is uh, approximately $5 million. The current taxes, as you can see, are about 4600 a year. And this agreement does have uh, a, a graduated increment of uh, first five years at 100 percent, years six to 10 at 80, and years 11 to 20 at 70. And I'd like to, with your permission, Mr. President, address specifically this agreement, but by doing so more broadly, address some of the issues that were raised for the, the previous agreement. Uh, and Councilors, just for piece of information, Attorney Burke is in the audience as well, if you have a question for him. Thank you. So uh, I, I think all of the statements made in response to the first tie agreement are absolutely true. Um, these agreements are discretionary and negotiated between the parties. My role obviously relates overwhelmingly to the finances of the agreement. Uh, and, and in that light, uh, I, I do support uh, tie agreements and I believe that if it takes 20 years to make the numbers work for the developers, it's all upside for the city. Uh, because when we talk about available tax revenues for uh, municipal services, please keep in mind that these agreements, uh, do, should they not happen at all, the tax revenue to the city is the same as it is today. Uh, should you institute the agreements, then the city, the city still gets 
more during the agreement, but it's more of the new value that's created. So the city's getting a little more and the developer is, is getting some more. But we're all sharing in that value. So even during the increment, although it's by its nature incremental, uh, we are seeing an increase in the tax revenue to, to the city. And then of course, yes, it is 20 years down the road, but it's almost like an annuity. Uh, and, and so at the end of that period, uh, the upside is substantial. So as you can see, uh, you know, in the neighborhood of $140,000 in new sustainable revenue that then increases by up to two and a half percent a year. Uh, so I, I think I absolutely understand the arguments that were made by the councilors, but I would say uh, from a financial perspective, uh, it's, it's all upside. Um, and so the, the really where the rubber meets the road is what that point of no return is for the city and the developer. And, and it, if it can be shrunk from 20 down to some other number, and how those numbers all work. But that, that is an inexact science. So in this particular development is, as you can see, as I just mentioned, uh, the upside is roughly $145,000 a year. And this particular development is for uh, 40 market rate units. And you can see it represented there graphically. So I'm happy to answer any questions on this agreement. And as the president mentioned, Mr. Burke is here. Ms. Clarkson, well. I think it would be important for the collective body for, for the previous one, for this one, and for the next one, to figure out how long these developers hold properties. Do they keep it as a portfolio, if we're talking 20 years out, or do they typically have a history to, uh, to sell it? Um, because that would be germane to what the solicitor gives us uh, his opinion on. Right. Thank you. Councilor Fowell, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members, I'm not going to repeat what I said before. I am going to offer an amendment to the duration and the exemption percentage for this particular property, and I would ask the clerk to distribute this to the uh, to the members. I would move to amend based on the information that will be presented to you in just a minute, and I'll just speak very briefly on it when we're. Thanks. I think if everyone, if everyone has a, a, uh, a copy of the handout, you'll see the exen exemption percentage is not 100% for the first five years. It goes from 60 down to 10% over a 10-year period. That was consistent with what other communities have done, given the size and scope of the project and the anticipated impact that it may or may not have on the city. I think uh, this would be more than generous. Uh, obviously, it would not provide as much financial benefit to the developer, but I think it's a fair blend between the needs of the city and the developer. Um, and, I, and I just want to make a comment about housing, and I, I posted something about this recently publicly. Th there is a lot of talk about how housing is going to do this, housing is going to do that. Councillor Azak is very lucky. She has probably one of the most densely populated areas on Oak Street, starting at Battle Street, all the way up to North Pearl Street, including 349 North Pearl Street, Chateau Westgate, 30 and 50 Oak Street extension, 40 and 60, uh, the, the 40 and 60 uh, apartments on that street. If you look at the, the concentration of people in that area, it couldn't support a Walgreens, it couldn't support Macy's, it, it couldn't support a movie theater. So the notion that just throwing enough people into an area spurns economic development, there are other components to that. Because clearly Ward 7 is blessed with a lot of people, hardworking, who live up in that area, but yet that hasn't turned it into Rodeo Drive. I mean, it, it just hasn't. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I just am cautionary when I hear that housing is the, is the answer to everything. But the motion is to amend if it receives a second. Point of parliamentary procedure. Council, please. I just would ask uh, to, if we could hold off on the motion, because I had some questions that would not be on the motion. So uh, just if we could ask our questions before the motion. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Motion's been withdrawn, Councilor. Withdrawn this time. Now, yes. 
Council, are you, are you vacating the floor right now? Yes, well, thank you. Council Cruz, please. Uh, just a couple of comments, but first, actually, <laughs> Council McGarry pointed this out to me, and I think it's in the agreement, there is something that, that worries me. Uh, under Section 3, so subsection 2, I guess, sponsors shall use good faith efforts to maintain the units as MRRUs for a minimum of 20 years. But that means that the, the, we can make this agreement under the understanding they're market rate units and they could be turned into low income units, correct? So I would say based on the wording in this agreement, that's possible. The agreement was provided us to the Commonwealth as the, the, the blueprint. So I, I believe, and I'm, I'm not certain of this, I'd have to check, Councillor, but that uh, this was the template that's been used for previous agreements here in the city? Yes. Okay. Excuse me. So this is the agreement the state provides that you have to utilize for each step properties. So that hat would have to stay in? Yes. That gives me pause. Um, you know, I mean, the building right outside of our own city hall w w was built to be a, an over 55 building years ago, and it uh, isn't, and it's, it's an issue. Um, and then my only other comment before the councilor makes his motion is I'm not sure if we should be voting to change the uh, to actually put this into the unit into the uh, proposal or ask the uh, our our team to go back and negotiate mm -hmm. with the idea that we know is a, that yeah. 10 years is what the council is probably looking to do because I think it's tough to say to make it in the agreement and then ask them to go back Councils, and negotiate. I also it. as president I also would uh, pause to make any amendments at this time without having our legislative our own attorney here Attorney Resnick, we pay her to give us legal advice and legal opinion. Um, I'm not saying I'm opposed to what Council Fowler was selling, saying, but since our attorney's not here, uh, it's, it's, it's tough to talk about amendments and modifications and revisions to a contract. That, that's, that's all I wanted to that's say. That's all I'm asking also. So uh, thank you. I just, uh, th that's my two points. Thank you. Thank you, Council Cruz. Mr. President, if I just address Clarkson, a question sure. from Council Cruz. That, so I, I think he raises an excellent point, and so mm -hmm. it sounds like at least that you're going to postpone this to gather some information from the Legislative Council on the amendment to the agreement. So in that interim, I'll reach out to the Commonwealth if you could. And, uh, and ask the question on, on that provision that you raised in Section 3, uh, subsection B2. Okay. Council Cruz, you, you yield you. the I'm floor. All, all set, thank you. Any other councils? Mr. Go Chairman. back to Council Fowler, please. Mr. Chairman, just for the record, I think Councilor Cruz has raised a, a good point, as you have. Uh, we don't have legislative council here, mm -hmm. and perhaps the team could go back and accomplish what we'd like to accomplish, uh, or at least what I'd like to accomplish, is shorten the duration and lower the percentage. So I'd like to formally withdraw any mention of that, Duly noticed. Of that uh, amendment. Thank you. And then I would like to move to postpone both, uh, uh, postpone this one until the second FinCom in October to allow for legislative council and the administration team to be able to meet with the appropriate people and come back to us with uh, an amended uh, proposal. Second. Uh, that's the form of a motion. It was probably second, and the matter would be postponed until the second finance in October. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Madam Clerk, postpone to the second <laughs> FinCom in October, please. And we'll go on to number six. Ordered that the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed Housing Development Incentive Program, HDIP, Tax Increment Exemption <coughs> Agreement, TIE, for 19-31 Main Street between the City and Brockton Development Company, LLC. Invited Tory Clarkson, CFO, John O'Donnell, Chairman of Assessors, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Catherine Norcott. Mr. Clarkson. Thank you, Mr. Thank President you. and members of the Council. This is the third of three tie agreements. Uh, as with the other developments, the developer, uh, in this case, Catherine Norcott is here and uh, welcome to the opportunity to share some of the details of the development with you. Uh, as you can see, for, uh, for this one, Terry, would you just give us the, the, the graph, please? 
Uh, this too is uh, a true increment where uh, based on the percentages in the agreement, this is uh, fiscal, uh, the first five years at 100 percent, the year six to 10 at 80, and years 11 to 20 at 70 percent. Um, so we do anticipate, uh, again, a significant upside to this one and taxes of approximately $72,000 a year to the city at the conclusion of the increment. We did do the base uh, of zero in this one because it's a city-owned property, so right now there is no tax revenue to the city. So on this one, it's all upside. Um, Thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Any questions for the CFO? Uh, Councilor Ianeri, please. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. And good evening, Mr. Clarkson. Um, I, I just want to not so much just hinge on this particular one, but I guess I want to um, just chime in a little bit on, on even the other two um, that, we, that have been before us and been dis discussed. Um, now, I understand a TIF because I was here for many years and, and some of my areas up on West Chestnut Street, believe it or not, were TIFs because they were zoned because that's the area, that's how the area is made and that's how we brought business into the city, into that particular area by giving a TIF into a zoned area. And we had other zoned areas as well. I understand the, the situation here um, in, in what we're doing here with these particular ones as well. Um, but I, I also think that when we come to the close of the day and, and decision making is made, I firmly believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I firmly believe that the final decision still lies on, on, on what the mayor feels that he or she wants to do. If I'm not correct, then you know, correct me. But I, I think it's, yes, the city council has its rights for discussion. And yeah, I, I think that maybe we should probably have to take a look you know, back at, you know, is there a way that we can, you know, maybe go back to the table, have the mayor go back to the table and discuss this with developers? I think that that's something that we can bring, but at the end of the day, the mayor makes the decision. The city council doesn't sign a contract. Am I right or am I wrong? Well, I, I, we're getting, uh, drifting into probably a, a, a legal question, so I'll answer the question as a non-attorney based on my experience. Right. Uh, I, I think the mayor, as the chief executive negotiates the agreement and then submits it to you, the legislative body, where you do have the authority to approve or, or, or deny it. So yes, the mayor negotiates the agreement, uh, but its final approval uh, is here and by the legislative body. So I think uh, there's a, a, a dual role. Um, and so the, as to what the components are of the agreement, I, I would suggest, yeah, you're probably right, Councillor, that that's an executive function. but in my experience as a someone who's served in that role uh, in an appointed capacity it's always best when you have the collaboration of the legislative body so that the end result is something that's approvable okay. so uh, in in that instance I think having your input um, and I'm taking notes to bring back right. to, to the mayor and he's actually here so well, he's and, and I've already, I, I just discussed that briefly with him so I'm sure when he comes up he'll probably make his own comment and I'm not disagreeing with with what you with what you're saying either but I just think that um, you know the, the one most important thing I have and, and appreciate you know we're having the discussion about is is the fact that you know um, we have developers here that that uh, you know want to be in the city of Brockton and naturally want to make right you know, being here and, and doing what we can to continue to move the city forward, which is something I, I think we need to do. I just don't want to see us, you know, actually be doing nothing and then all of a sudden, you know, we're going back and forth negotiations and all of a sudden the developer says, well, see you later. Then I can, I can go elsewhere. That's a problem. So at That's the end a of the day, Councilor, I, I, absolutely right. And so that in this package of agreements, we have developers willing to invest tens of millions of dollars in downtown in the city of Brockton. And I have found in, in my career that that sort of development is contagious and word gets around. And so uh, mm -hmm. I think we're in a period right now where there's excitement uh, and right. there's uh, a buzz about Brockton is a place to do business, right? And that's right. that's important. And, and I'm and I'm not, I'm not trying to go further, Mr. President. If I might just take just one step further, but you know, it, 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 this I see differently because it's new development. But if somebody approached me a few weeks ago and said, "Well, I hear Westgate Mall might be getting a tip," 
that's an existing business. Why would I want to give an existing business a TIF when I have the chance to give a new business? I don't care if Westgate Mall, if business isn't where it should be there, that's their problem, not my problem, or is it the taxpayer's problem? But here is something we're able to do, and I think the taxpayers will understand. Yeah, we may have to take a look at some types of reductions, and I think Councilor Fowler is right, uh, you know, and what we're doing to postpone and take a, take a look doesn't mean we're not going to do something, but I just think that, you know, we, we've got we've to stay on track. Um, and and I, I'm going to ask the mayor his, his opinion when he does speak before us, but uh, I just want to make sure that, you know, at the end of the day that we're, we are all, like you say, we're all together here on this because I think it's most important, and I want these people to stay here to do whatever they have to do to continue to move Brockton forward. So thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Council and area. And point of information, some of us were around. We did get a tip to W.B. Mason uh, because they were going to leave the city of Brockton, and uh, they've been here since uh, all before us. Um, but with that being said, are there any other questions germane to this agenda item? I'm going to entertain a Council Fowler. Yeah, I, I'm ju I just noticed that this has the same language which uh, Councillor Cruz found in the earlier proposal. Uh, and to my colleague at Ward 3, in <coughs> Ward 3, I don't disagree that we should be development friendly, but I also don't think that we should lie in our back and get rolled over. We, we really have we really have to find, as I say, that blend between what's fair to the developer and what's fair to the residents in, in terms of the, the funds that we would pass up if we were to grant these exemptions. So I'm going to move to postpone to the second FinCom in October. I will, just for the sake of the people being here, I will still uh, be offering an amendment to reduce the length and the percentages that are in the agreement and hope that the team can come back with something uh, that's approved by our legislative council and we can take a look at. Oh. It wasn't seconded yet, council, so I'll... Well, that's good. On the good. Earth, Someone speaking on it first. Good evening. I'm Catherine Norcott. Hold on for a second, please. Huh. Council, do you have any objections as a second? Do you want to hear this or no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It could be healthy, too. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So my name is Catherine Norcott and I'm here with my two colleagues. Uh, Mike Ahern and uh, Kevin McCarthy. Uh, w and we have been uh, involved in development, Mike, particularly for over 30 years in the city of Boston. Kevin and I much more recently, since 2012. And I just wanted to give you a little perspective from a developer's standpoint. Um, you know, we, we saw a lot of things change. I mean, East Boston, uh, we saw it when I was afraid to get out of my own car and look into buildings up there. It's getting a lot better, but I, I wouldn't say I'd go out there at certain times of the day. But um, and, and likewise, um, you know, there's a risk and reward to development. And, um, you know, in the fall of 97, <laughs> the commuter rail started down in Middleborough, Lakeville, mid and came all the way up. I know because I was on it in the fall of that year, tr uh, commuting into the city of Boston and financial services. Um, and that really, I think a lot of people thought it was going to transform Brockton. And it didn't. And I think there's more abandoned buildings today than there were then. Um, so, you know, we came down to look at Brockton after seeing the, the, the migration, you know, Quincy's had some opportunities and other towns. We thought, well, maybe there is opportunity here. Mike's, Mike has done work in all those locations and also is, has history here with the city, and I do too, having lived in Bridgewater. My in-laws, my mother-in-law grew up here on Warren Ave, but she went to Brockton School of Nursing. My father-in-law was, uh, worked at Brockton Edison. So, you know, I'm familiar with this city. I remember when Frank's had the best fried clams and uh, had nice dancing at night, and it's changed, right? And uh, Cape Cod Cafe is still makes some good pizza. But all, all I want to say is, you know, we came down here starting in February and looked around, and quite frankly, you know, I was I was not in, in at all excited about the area. Um, but we, we spent some time. We, we met with Robert Jenkins. We got educated. We met with the mayor. We met with a uh, number of people um, in, in, the, uh, in City Hall. And we started to see, yeah, there seems to be something here. Um, but then, you know, I, I have to ask the questions. I still have concerns. And so the rewards to us are w we have to figure out we're going to pay uh, uh, $250,000 for the building out of pocket. We'll probably have to spend another $100,000 just to get our permitting and all our forms and things done and architectural drawings. So we're, we're going to outlay a lot of capital before we even break ground. And, um, you know, I take a look at Green Street, and I take a look at those two um, buildings up on Green Street that are, we all know. I mean, I, I've walked around and seen it. Um, and I'm wondering what the city council or the city is doing about those buildings, because that gives me pause. Do I want to put 
um, market rate properties there, uh, right down at the bottom of that hill, and think that we're going to rent it to a woman coming home from a hospital at night, and does she feel safe coming home with what's going on still in Green Street? Why isn't something being done on that? Likewise, Father Bill's, we, you know, that's not an attractive building, and, it's, and during the day, those people have to be out of there, and where do they fall? They come right down in front of the building that we're looking at. We've sat there, I've watched it, so that's the experience that we have, and we're saying, you know, I, I have to sort of still convince myself, and, um, you know, when I sit here tonight, I really thought that this was going to be sort of a, we're grateful that you're all here and want to do this. And, you know, I know that uh, Jeffrey Anatole had uh, 47 Pleasant Street, and he received a plan that we are asking for. He also received it for 47 ma West Elm. That's not germane to what's before us right now. I understand, but Thank there's you. a precedent that's been Thank set. Thank you, though. Thank you. We understood that. So I just say to you that that's the perspective of us and other people who want to come down here and invest in a city that still has more abandoned buildings than, I, than I, you know, most cities. It is a gateway city. Um, and, uh, you know, we just ask you to think about that um, before you discourage um, in the investments. Any, anybody else want to say something? Just a quick word. So we looked at the numbers pretty clearly on this building. We started negotiating this back in March. Mm -hmm. And when we, we actually looked for a much more aggressive tax relief plan. And we were turned down by Troy and his uh, partners, and we settled on this one. The, I don't think people understand that when you do a building like this, the lending institutions need you to carry 1.25% uh, on your income levels. Based on what the market rate is here, it's going to be a struggle to get that. It's going to be a struggle to break even. That's what set the tax base. And to get commercial development and people to sign new leases and stay here in the city, we need to be able to give them breaks as landlords. And we can't do that unless we have the help of the city council. That's all I would say. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Councilor Fowler, you have questions? Yeah, just a, a couple of questions for you. Sure. I, are you not going to receive uh, assistance from the state? No. You, so you're not going to receive a dime from the state as far as your housing project? No, we're not, we're not getting any federal funding. On, we're we're borrowing money from Mass Development. That's a private entity. But, right, but you'll, you'll be, you're getting help from Mass Development? It's not help. We're borrowing market rate money. We're paying okay. market rate loans. So there, there's no, no grants, grants, there's no, no. no nothing? No, no credits, no tax credits, nothing. Okay. Other than what you do for us. That's it. Okay. And and when you purchased the building, you had no idea whether we were going to grant anything or not. I mean, no one, no, no. We haven't purchased it. I'm purchasing the building based on this meeting. Right. If, oh, if, so you. If things don't go correctly, I can't make the numbers work and I can't buy the building. Right. Oh, I see. So this is all predicated on us giving you 100% for the first X number of years exemption it's going to as Catherine stated and you all know the condition of the neighborhood it's going to take a while to lease this up this is not going to ramp up open the doors and be fully occupied the first month all right now this is the last question and it's not meant to be argumentative sure. run down house in a neighborhood couple comes along and they say you know what we can uh, we can purchase that house for a reasonable price we can put a couple hundred thousand dollars into it we can really fix it up and we can make it something nice that we can live in. We do nothing for them. Nothing. Does it bother you at all that the developers that can come in and have when you, know, when tax? When you say there's a rundown <coughs> house in a neighborhood, Excuse me? is that neighborhood, everyone else is doing well, so if they fix theirs up, their value is there and, and they're going to not no, have I, to. No, I'm just taking an, uh, well, just we, a family, we a family. Do this every, we already do this every day. We buy houses in neighborhoods, we get no relief. But this is a much riskier situation. We, yeah. we, we yeah. talked about what's happening here. There are many vacant buildings. To get people interested in the city, it takes a cooperation. The Lower East Side, New York, did 100% tax relief for 20 years. Yeah. Because they couldn't get developers there to go. And now they got them there. And now the new guys are not getting any tax relief. So as it was stated earlier by Troy, it's a domino effect. Once it starts going, you don't want to be coming back in front of you because they'll just be happy to be here getting buildings. But until we can turn the market here, it's not going to happen. Okay. Well, I, you know, I, I don't blame you for asking for that level of exemptions. I mean, if I were in your place, I probably would do the same thing. Unfortunately, now, just for me, I'm only speaking individually, I have to think about the residents to whom I report and what do we do for them and is it fair and what do they get out of it? I mean, your, your project isn't going to generate a single job. Well, with all due respect, it is because we're putting in a 200-seat uh, restaurant. restaurant in the first floor. Okay, so that's well, going to generate jobs. If, but if, on top of that, if we bring in market rate housing, 
and especially downtown near the train station, we, we hope to have people here that have disposable Sorry. income. If we raise the values of the commercial spaces that are left in the Brockton area, if those stores can reopen and get flourishing, your tax base goes up on all that commercial property as well. As this building rises, so does every other building rise. Your tax, you're gonna, it's a domino effect. You're gonna raise the rates of everyone. Businesses will come back, yep. values go up. But you can't have that if you have vacant buildings. And right now, let's go down there at eight o'clock at night. What's happening down there now? Oh, I, I, you don't have to tell me. I know. <laughs> I want to. I agree that. with you. So thank the, you. The only way we can get there, and that's all the developers. We all know this. This is not a secret. It, it all comes down to numbers in the end. Yeah. And it, it, it's a risk reward, as Catherine said. If the market goes bust, as some people are predicting, in two years, mm -hmm. are, are you guys going to come back and give us back money? Probably not, right? Well, you. That's your decision to make. Exactly. It's my decision. So yeah. we're going to make this decision, and we're going to base it on this plan. We've already hit the bottom limit here. So there is no more reduction. You might want to change it. You want to change the time, then you have to change the amount. But it all has to end up at that same price. So, so you're basically saying you either take this or, or you know. We, we spent the last six months doing it. Okay. All right. I'm at my bottom line at this point. Okay. Thank awesome you. Awesome money. And you have a question? Yeah, since <clears throat> I'm, I met with them originally uh, when they were doing this, but I think listening to all of my colleagues tonight, we really got to watch what we're doing here. Development in the city, it's starting, things are starting to go, go places. But like you said, that Green Street building is sitting there and has been sitting there for before I became a council 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. it's, it's giving us zero. That's 10 years of nothing except trying to maintain that building. We have pe the mayor, we have uh, the BRA, we have the planner negotiating for the best interest of the city. But if we're gonna pick away at these things, these people have done the work on it. For I don't know how much difference in, in uh, uh, for 20 years or 10 years the cash is, but 20 years from now, that building's still gonna be sitting there developing, giving us nothing. So. We really have to be business friendly. We have a bad reputation as it is with people really not being business friendly as far as I'm concerned on the outside of the city. We really have to take, I think we gotta trust the assessor's office, the BRA, the mayor, to th they're gonna negotiate the best deal they can get for it. And when you're dealing with uh, businesses and developers, they have a price line, they can only go so far to make, make sure they make a profit out of it. And you're not gonna take money away from it and they're gone then you get nothing. So we yes, we want to do the best deal we can, but I think we have a little faith in the people that are doing these negotiations. I think they've done a, god, a good job on the tips we've had in the past to keep businesses here like Mason's, uh, other businesses. But you know, we don't want to scare people away. And sitting here tonight, I just listened to it all. You're going to scare businesses away, and you're not going to see the development downtown continue as we have. She's right. You've got Main Street down, Main Spring downtown. Mm -hmm. It travels right down, to, right in front of 19, they sleep right in that building, right out in front. And they're going to keep sitting, sleeping there, and it, we're going to deter businesses from coming in. These people are trying to come in, obviously they're going to make, want to make money, they're not going to give it away, <coughs> but by developing that building, you're going to see <coughs> a clean up downtown. You're going to see more businesses come in here and want to develop downtown. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to progress and make that downtown come back the way it is. And we really can't be, I understand concerns that we have, you know, but really, we are going to start, the progress we made is going to start going backwards if we keep picking and nitpicking and things like this. But that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurt. Council yeah. Lally, followed by Darren Court, please. Thank you. I just wanted to sort of stress, I know Council Monahan just said it. Um, whatever's left after this this is this is not all profit for you as as you said this you have other expenses there there's money that goes into projects like this so we're not we're not trying to get a bigger share of the profits there is no bigger share of the profits in that sense this is you get something or you get nothing it's it, we're, we're at that we're at that point and it's you know I said it and, and mr. Clarkson said it mr. Hearn said it um, it's it builds it's a snowball kind of effect people invest it works out well they grow their businesses and then more people come in and then you reach a point where you're not doing these kinds of agreements they're just jumping right in and getting to work but and we're 
we're starting that snowball now. You know, people are investing, people are building things in the city. Uh, it's been talked about. We're 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 getting it going, but this, you know, holding all of this up and and, and hemming and hawing, there there are some good points to be made and some things to rev be reviewed. But we're 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 just stopping everything that we're starting. You know, we have to be careful with, you know, how how much we jump on jump on this stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Lally. Councilor Lodge, down court, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to thank you guys for taking the time to come down here. And obviously, I mean, I think that I do have some questions in regard to <coughs> all three of them, but I think that, <coughs> sorry, you know, it's been a long day. I use my voice a lot just in case uh, you want there. I think that, you know, uh, given the fact that according to what you stated earlier, uh, you are not receiving anything from the state, and I think that it somewhat changed what I was thinking. And of course, willing to support you guys uh, based on what you are trying to do. But I think that we as a city, you mentioned uh, Green Street um, probably like four hours ago. I was up there, you know, doing some uh, personal business in regard to some of the stuff that I want to do in the city. And I think having something uh, like that um, on Green Street will definitely transform that place. And I think we need this in this city. And I think that, um, like Council uh, Monian stated, that some people believe that we are not uh, business friendly and given the fact that we have so many uh, empty buildings in the city I think as we speak I think you and I spoke probably when um, I believe Lieutenant Governor Van Polito came here uh, a while ago about certain things but I think given the fact that you know we are at a crossroad where we are desperately need business to come down here I don't want you know people to think that we are not <coughs> here for business uh, somebody that represent uh, the entire police I think that I have a solemn obligation to represent the resident accordingly. So with that being said, I do have some uh, very uh, good questions in regard to, you know, the policies and the process of, you know, voting on something that will have like 20 years um, in terms of life in the city. But at the same time, I think that, you know, I am at a position where I can actually encourage you guys to do a business. And I think it's an investment that you are making. I mean, obviously, I mean, people can have excellent idea about the outcome, but you don't know. I mean, the market might crash. Right. what have you so right. it's a risk and I think that you know to somewhat join my colleague uh, Council Monaghan I just want to scare you guys from you know going home tonight and thinking about like you know maybe I should go somewhere else so give us some times um, if you can so we can definitely you know take some time to analyze this and hopefully in October when we come back here and like um, the chairman stated that we will have our you know um, attorney here uh, to somewhat like insert some of the questions that I have and then we can make a decision but one of the things that you can count on me I will support that I will vote on it um, in favor of you guys because I think that you know we should be more business friendly and I spoke with a lot of folks saying that uh, it's so long for them to get at least a permit to open a business in Brockton the complexity of going through X and Y and Z you know it makes them just want to walk away but I think um, my colleagues uh, do have uh, some excellent point in regard to you know the city because uh, as you can see I think that I am proud of being part of this uh, council because uh, uh, you know some of us do care if not all of us uh, about the outcome of this place but I mean we can agree uh, to disagree but I just want you guys to understand that uh, I got your back uh, regardless of what's going on and um, and I think uh, some of my colleagues do have your back but they just need some information but I'm excited about what you guys are about to do in the city, especially Green Street. You and I spoke about that, and the moment you said uh, you are not receiving any fund from the state, uh, this was uh, what I needed to hear in regard to the outcome for it. So you are making an investment uh, based on your own willingness to come down here. I mean, the place is dead. I mean, look at downtown. I don't Boston. sleep well at night thinking about this project. <laughs> I'm sorry? I tell you the truth. I do not sleep well at night thinking about this project. Yeah, but I would like, you know, personally, uh, I would like you to go home and, and sleep well and knowing that at least so far you have one person uh, that <coughs> will support this. But I think some of my colleagues will, but they just need uh, some more information because sometimes people believe that we just uh, sit up here and not doing anything. And I think some of my colleagues uh, made some excellent point in regard to you know, the probability of not knowing the unknown. And I think our taxpayer should definitely know. But in regard to having business coming to Brockton, uh, I think some people that know me will tell you that I am all in favor of that. So uh, I just want to thank you guys for taking the time to, you know, answer these questions willingly. And I think in October, uh, I'll see you guys again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Council Beauregard followed by Azak. 
thank you, Mr. President. I mean, I, as uh, Councillor Farrell had mentioned in the two previous discussions, uh, we had items in front of us. It seems that, to me, I would support postponing till October the, the second FinCom meeting so that we're allowed to get all the answers, acquire all the answers, and make a you know more um, informative decision. And as um, also my colleague, Councilor Cruz had mentioned, it always concerns me what will happen with these buildings and can it be flipped to low-income housing? And that is a serious concern for our um, community. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Isaac, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I want to thank you for wanting to invest in Brockton. And um, that's what we hope for. That's what I. That's why I ran for city council, because I wanted to see people invest in Brockton, and I also wanted um, people to invest in our residents. And that's what, when you come and want to invest in Brockton, you're investing in our residents because you want to um, beautify it, make it better. So the, everybody has a vision, and. Um, and it's exciting to see somebody who wants to do something beautiful. So I look forward to seeing plans. I just want to remind everybody that a lot of the residents in the area went through the same process. We have the station lofts, Pleasant Joffrey's project on Pleasant Street, 50 Center Street, which has a beautiful gallery, and I drive by it every day, and it could be in any big city. Um, these are... These are places that could be in any city in the world, but they're in Brockton, and these are people that decided to invest in Brockton. So I am grateful for that. Um, now if my colleagues choose, if I don't know how the vote's going to go, but if they choose to postpone, how does that affect you, your project? Just extended the, the time we could close on the building. So it just pushes it. It just pushes it right, further, we, okay. We, uh, I mean. I'm sorry, we're not gonna sign a PNS without knowing what we have, because then we don't understand our financials. Okay. We could put ourselves in harm's way, so. And that's understandable. And then um, have you thought about, I'm sure when you were looking at your numbers, did you look, did you think about instead of like a 20 year plan, what it would, if it could be any, did you think about 10 or 15, did you? Yeah, we, there was many proposals mm -hmm. back and forth and we, we did all the numbers and as I said, we asked for more than that. Okay. And we agreed to come up to this level. And this is the best that, that it's going to be? The, we have went to three the instances. We have to have minimums that we have to carry. There's not a lot of property there. It doesn't start making money until like year 13, 14. And that's if everything goes 100% occupied, 100% retail occupied, everything goes right, and we get the rent to stay stabilized that Joffrey's getting. And, mm -hmm. and we don't know that. We're all taking the risk, right? We're all jumping in. But as I said before, if we do raise the income levels there and the people spend money in the community, all the buildings go up in value. Mm -hmm. Therefore, all your tax base raises. It's not just about these three buildings. It's about what they can do for the whole community. Which is true, and I, I understand that. And I saw that with um, the building on Pleasant Street, that when the, they first started talking about the project, there was a lot of um, homeless that was in the parking lot, and that was, you know, people thought that may be an issue, but that hasn't been an issue, and the residents are happy there, and I believe that's fully <coughs> occupied. So I believe good things kind of help clean up the neighborhood and would help us uh, move the city forward. It's been proven in most urban areas that the more eyes you put on the street, that's right. that the more tr less trouble you have. Yeah. So uh, I true. think that's part of it, too. You know, well, can you get people downtown in the nighttime? We have less problems. Well, I believe that as well. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You, Chairman. Are there any councils that haven't asked a question that choose to? Follow up by Council Powell. Yeah, just uh, to the lady and the gentleman, this is the document that was submitted to us. It was mailed out on the 14th of August. I probably received it, I think, the 16th. Uh, so I had three days to look at it. There is absolute, unless my eyesight has really degenerated, there is nothing here that mentions a 200-seat restaurant. Absolutely nothing. I mean, I, I can't, I, how could I possibly know, not that that would change my philosophy, but, but uh, it, it's just not there. So, I mean, I can, only, I can only analyze and review what's presented to me. I can't wait for someone to suddenly say, oh, well, we're going to have a 200-seat restaurant. As I was just reminded, the commercial base of the building is going to be taxed the regular tax base the whole way through. 
The, the, so the commercial space is not yeah. getting the break. Well, we're, we're still waiting for a restaurant at the, uh, at, at uh, I, know, I know many operators that try to go in there and yeah. they've, they've looked at, and I know these people. <coughs> I know, I know. Environment. And they said, unless there's more density, yeah. there's nothing to support the restaurant. Okay, well, and by the way, is Mr. McCarthy, is he here? Okay, are you, are you the Mr. McCarthy from Trinity Financial, a design engineer, or is that a different one? That's a different guy. Okay. All right, but I just, I just wanted you to know that's, that's all I can go by is what I get, so thank you. Any other uh, questions? Pastor Cruz. I do have a question for Mr. O'Donnell, please. And I just want to, you just mentioned through them, but I wasn't aware of this. So the, the TIEs are only on the residential portion of the building. Mm -hmm. Only residential. Yep. Commercial so the commercial gets, portion pays no full. Exemption. There is no exemption, no, no break on that. All three projects have commercial involved. And how do you, how do you adjust the, the valuation towards that? Uh, so how do we know what they get taxed on at the full? Well, the commercial will be separate. It's uh, it's a mixed use property. So it's a mixed use. So there's two two separate tax two, bills. No, no, same tax bill, but there's two portions to the assessment process. To the assessment process. Yeah. And there's and no the break. The time on, will only go on to the residential. And just portion. Uh, for a little, if a little leeway, that's true on all three of these. Yes. Projects. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. But thank you. Mr. 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 Chairman. Just, just one last follow-up, then, Mr. O'Donnell. Or if it's not in the TIE, then technically they're not, they're not they're committed to doing a restaurant. Am I right? That would, at some point, they could decide we're not going to do the restaurant. Well, Mike is a rest he owns All restaurants. Right. But, but I believe we're signing an LDA, right? Yeah. So that's separate from this. But it's an separate. LDA agreement, in this agreement. This agreement. Mm -hmm. It goes back to your question about affordability. So when you sign an LDA, the LDA is going to is going to state that the building has to remain market rate. In the event that the developer forfeits on that, there's two ways out of an LDA. You can buy your way out where, where you could do affordability and pay a big penalty to the city, or the city of Brockton could come back in and take the building in violation of the LDA. So land disposition agreement protects the city. So, you, so there'd be a separate <coughs> document executed other than this one? That's correct. Okay. And there's also, when we went through zoning, we did apply as part of the zoning yep. package to have the restaurant. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Hearn, yeah. since you've done a lot of this, I just had a question. Do you believe that a TIE runs with the property or specific to the uh, developer? It has to run with the property because it's based on leases, right? So if you have a property that's under a lease program, if something, God forbid, happens to the developers and you, you know, if some of those, you know, Kevin's a little old, no, no offense, oh. but something happens and it causes the forces of sale, the value will be decreased to, uh, effectively to nil. Right, because right, there'll be no profit. So it has to run with the property. Thank you. Huh. Thank you. Any other follow-ups? Seeing none, there was a motion on the floor that was properly seconded to postpone this agenda item like the two previous ones to the second FinCom in October, correct? To be reviewed by legislative Right, council. with all the condition precedent to it that we did the other ones. All in favor of that, please raise your hand. All opposed? Do it again. We need to get a number down. Roll call you vote, Mr. Do you Chairman? Want a, what? Roll call vote. Can we do that? Is that a form of a motion, Council? Form of a motion. Under yeah. Robert's rules? Yes. yes. All right. Roll we'll call Robert. vote, Madam Clerk, yes. please. Councilor Azak? No. Councilor Beauregard? Yes. Councilor Cruz? No. Councilor Dancourt? No. Councilor Ernery? No. Councilor Farwell? Yes. Councilor Lally? No. Councilor McGarry? Yes. Councilor Monahan? No. Councilor Nicastro? Yes. Councilor Sullivan? Yes, to keep it contingent with the other two. What's the count, please? Six nays. Pardon? Six noes? Yes. It fails. Okay, then at this point, I'm going to move to introduce uh, a reduced uh, duration and percentages for tax exemption, and I would, it's already been distributed, which would be uh, part of this parcel. Is that the form of a motion? That's the form of a motion. If it gets a second. Second. Where is it? It's a motion made. It was properly seconded to entertain the amendment as stated by Councilor Farwell. And it was already passed out, right? You didn't modify that as such? Yes, I, I can read it for the record again. You could. You it, but. All right, this would change the exemption percentage and the duration from 20 years and 100% for the first couple of years to a 10-year agreement 
which would be 60 percent, 60 percent, 55 percent, 50 percent, 45 percent, 40 percent, 35 percent, 30 percent, 20 percent, and 10 percent. One second, Council. So motion on the floor was properly seconded. The president is going to ask for a roll call vote. If you're in favor of the amendment as stated by Councilor Fowlo. Madam Clerk, please read the roll. Uh, uh, Councilor Azak. No. Councilor Beauregard. Yes. Councilor Cruz. No. Councilor Darincourt. No. Councilor Arenary. No. Councilor Farwell. Yes. Councilor Lally. No. Councilor McGarry. No. Councilor Monahan. No. Councilor Nicastro. No. Councilor Sullivan. No. Nine nays, fails. Motion fails. Councilors, I'm just a little confused, so maybe someone could correct me on my confusion. I previously stated that our legislative attorney is not here. Mm -hmm. We previously postponed two matters that are exactly the same as this, correct? Yeah. It, that, that's a fact. She's not here. Correct. So I just, I just caution you, and you can do what you want. I'm only one of 11. But we, we, we need to vet it out through our legislative council that's not here. We also asked the city solicitor to give us an opinion. I believe Mr. Hearn's correct, but we need to hear it from the city attorney, correct? Mm -hmm. It's not anti-business to ask that our attorney's not here. So that's for the record. Can, I, can we speak? Sure. Well, They're not all the same. I'm Darren DeCoast from uh, 127 Center Corner. We were up second yeah. on the agenda. The three projects aren't the same. Only one project. Oh, no, no, the, the TIE is the, the same. TIE, the TIE saying, is the right, same. You were, you were basing that postponement upon the ruling from the judge no. in litigation. No. no. Oh, that's no. what we understood. No, that was one component of it. The other component was we want a legal opinion from the city solicitor relative if, if it runs with the land or if it's specific okay. to the Should developer. Isn't that what I was say, stated, Mr. Claxon? Oh, I, I believe that's the case. But again, we're on this agenda item. What's the will of the council? Can Move favorable. Is that the form of a motion? Form of a motion. I didn't hear the motion. I'm sorry. He may, he's making a favorable recommendation, recommendation back to the full council motion. Second. So motion on the floor was properly seconded. Move for a roll call vote. Uh, on the motion. On the motion, council. Thank you very much. I understand what the, the proponents standing in front of us are looking for, and I understand that we're missing information. So why don't we compromise and postpone this to a finance committee meeting in September? Second. And that brings it, that brings it sooner to a head, gives us the opportunity to speak to our city solicitor and our legislative council. And yet, it's not as onerous as putting them off until February. Second. It's a compromise. October, you mean? Not that they're October. 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 Mm -hmm. I thought September meeting. No, no, no. no. September meeting. I've heard you, you misstated and said it was postponed to February. It's October. Oh, forgive me. Forgive me. I was okay. getting into it. Yes, I meant the September September Finance Committee. No, okay. Council, Dar thank you, Council. Council Darren Court, please. Yes, Chairman. Uh, I am all in favor of, as you can see, this, but I personally. It seems like my mic was off. Um, I'm all in favor of, you know, supporting this, but at the same time, I, I just want to restate it, what I just said, given the fact that the mic was off. But I think that it's important for, for me personally to know exactly what's going on in regard to the consequences, given the fact that our, you know, attorney, she's not here, and there are certain questions that I have, uh, not against you, not against business, because like I stated earlier, I would like you guys to come down here as fast as I can. I mean, you can see the vote just completely changed, but given the fact that you know, I have a lot of concerns, not just about this one, but also the other two. Um, I, I really want to sit down and, and talk to her. And I was going to ask, you know, the CFO questions, given the fact that the chairman, you know, called us, you know, on the motions. I was kind of like coming back on my chair, to, uh, trying to understand the difference in regard to 
um, the amendment that Council Farwell just stated. So with that being said, uh, like I stated before, uh, you can count my support on this. I will vote in favor of it um, coming you know, September, but I really want to have some more time to do some research and obviously ask <coughs> some, some questions uh, based on uh, what I do not know as we speak. And I think that my colleague, uh, Council Nikashlu, is right. I mean, uh, we are in August, I mean, uh, you know, September, October. I think that it is fair to, uh, to us to actually give us, you know, some break personally. I'm speaking for myself right now and then see what happened uh, from there. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Azak, there's a motion on the floor, so yes. this is on the so motion. So on the motion, I just want to make, in in the case of the um, number five, which is 127 Center Street, could we, which is a little different than the 93 Center Street, could we have changed the date on that as well? Can we, we've already voted on that. Cause I couldn't hear you, Councilor, I'm sorry. So, in the case of 127 Center Street, which is closer to this project, which I, I was under the understanding that we voted on the um, FinCom in October to wait to see what the judgment is from the courts for, for, for which one is that? 93 Center Street. Let's address this one first. So can, then can we go back to- The, the will of the council, Councilor. Okay, so I, I didn't know if you wanted in the same motion. We have to stay. Yes. Have to stay on the agenda item before us right now. Okay. Councilor, you had a motion. You said it was I a favorable, it was second. Do you want to withdraw motion. that or do you want to go on a vote with that? I'd like to go on a vote with that, but I'd like to say something on the motion. On the motion, it's your motion. Um, we will have our attorney here next week. We can ask her questions, she can provide an opinion by that point, and if something doesn't smell right, if we've got a problem with it, we can always send it back to finance. But why, why not extend, you know, why not make that an option now? Why not at least present the opportunity to have it cleared through? Oh, right, she's right, never mind. But we, we still have the opportunity to have someone reach out to us. You know, she can either send us an email or attorney Ms. Rowlick and solicitor Ms. Rowlick can send us something. But we, we can get some legal opinion from someone somewhere which will, you know, help us with this measure and we won't have to push it off a month. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the uniqueness of the city of Brockton's legislative body, i.e. the city council, we have our own attorney. Mm -hmm. And then the city solicitor is the city's attorney. Mm -hmm. We would hope that they would work a collaborative approach relative to these matters, much like they do in other matters. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I, I, would, I would like to go forward with the motion. Okay. No, that's fine. It's, you made a motion. Is there anything else on the motion, or we're going to take a roll call read vote? The motion again. Oh, I'm it, sorry. Yeah. What, what is the motion? Is a favorable for this agenda item specific? A favorable recommendation back to the full council, okay, and it was probably the, seconded on the motion. Council Monahan, followed by Council Farwell. Yeah, I, and I would like to move this forward favorably, but I also think that by postponing it to the first finance in uh, September, hopefully, that there was some concern and some misunderstanding as far as the commercial part of these projects, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of the councils didn't understand that, what the, especially the council file was right on that, it was not in the, what was presented to us. So I think probably with the compromise and where we should talk to our legal counsel, and there was confusion on this, we're not going to be hurting anything by delaying this to the first uh, finance in uh, uh, September. And I just think it makes common sense to do that. So, I, you know, I'd ask my colleague to withdraw his his motion. Uh, that's my part. I, I withdraw my motion. Makes sense. So yeah. Second withdrawn as well. Yes. Who seconded? You did, did Council. It's I withdrawn. Did. There's no motion on the floor right now. I would make a motion to postpone till the first finance meeting till the next finance meeting. Second. Second. First one in September. First one. September. September. First of September. First and of September, right? And May just for Labor point Day. of information, I will be making a motion to revisit Labor the other Labor two. Day. Momentarily. Yeah, we get there. We'll get there, we'll exactly. Get there. So, <laughs> motion is to postpone until the next finance meeting. Second. Second. So, motion on the floor, it was properly seconded, to postpone this agenda item before us to the first FinCom in September, which actually be the Tuesday because Monday's Labor Day. Mm. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand. It carries. Madam Clerk, is postponed to the first FinCom, which will be the Tuesday because of the holiday. Mr. Chairman. Counselor, at with the condition point, precedent on those to get legal opinion and all that, correct? Uh, correct. Correct. Uh, at this point, I would ask you for the proper method of revisiting the dates of the other two postponements and ask for a vote to move those to September also. Well, I think 
Relative to agenda item number five, if there's no objection, we're gonna go back. Any objection, counselors? Seeing none, we're gonna go back to number five. And Mr. Chairman, so I'll, I'll move reconsideration in the hope that it prevails on the motion Second. to postpone. Relative to number five. Relative to number five in okay. the hope that it prevails. So counselors, the counselor had made a motion on number five to postpone to the second, second thin common October. He is now, and it was lawfully voted on, he is now asking that we reconsider that vote, okay? And that's the form of a motion. Is there a second, second. on that? Second. second. All right, there's a second on that. Now the matter comes before us on a reconsideration of that vote. If you vote in favor to reconsider it, then the date could be changed. We have to take vote number one first, okay? okay? All in favor of reconsideration, please raise your hand. All opposed, reconsideration has prevailed. Counselor, do you entertain a motion? I would now make a motion to postpone item number five till the next finance meeting. Second. 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 Be the first FinCom in September, which will be the Tuesday. Correct. It was properly seconded. Raise your hand if you're in favor of that. We're postponing to the first, it's pretty good, <laughs> Councilor Lodge, really high, I like it. <laughs> first FinCom in September. Get a star on his forehead. If you're opposed, raise your hand. It carries. So that now is modified and amended, Madam Clerk, to the first FinCom in September. I would now make a motion for reconsideration on item number four. Second. Number four relative to 93 Center Street, correct? Correct. Okay. So there's second. a motion. The second. There's a motion to reconsider. Yes. And there's also a second to that. Again, if you reconsider, we could modify the date. Is there any, is there a motion, is there a question on the motion? No. All right. If you're in favor of reconsideration for this, raise your hand. If you're opposed, okay, reconsideration also prevailed. We're on number four now. I would now make a motion to put item number four postponed until the next final Second. 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 So motion on the floor is properly second. Agenda night of number four has now been postponed to the first FinCom, which is the Tuesday in September. All in favor? Uh, All opposed? I was gonna say something on the motion. Go ahead, Council, on the motion. Thank I'll you. give you a leeway. Um, it's been a long night, you. hasn't it? It sure has. <laughs> I just wanna say that, that, it's, that we're waiting to hear from a, a court and they may not have a decision, and I understood that that was the reason it was postponed until October. That's we're, we're waiting for the outcome of a, a case regarding the imminent domain proceeding. We could, we could, on the motion, we could entertain the motion to September. The judge doesn't do a ruling by the time. You could, Mr. Carmen, of course you can. Uh, I'm Ted Carmen from- Mr. Jenkins is here as well. Any objection? He wasn't invited guest, but he's here. He, he has a lot of questions. He would have some information as well, right? right? Mr. Jenkins, not to put you on the spot, but just in case. Good evening, Robert. Thank you for being here. Good evening. Um, as Councilor Nicastro has indicated, she and I talked this afternoon. The judge that is seeing this, uh, this motion in Superior Court, from my understanding from our attorney, is on a murder case in Boston. He probably won't see this, and nothing moves quickly in Superior Court anyway. <laughs> It's very unlikely that there's gonna be a decision. It would be prudent, I think, for the council in the city because you're not, the motion to dismiss is against the BRA in our process. So it has nothing to do with the city council. If you approve this, if, he, if it falls not in our favor, it has nothing to do with you. He's not a developer, he doesn't own it. It goes back, it just falls to the wayside. So it would be prudent, I think, in my opinion, for the city council to take this up whenever you feel necessary. It has no effect whatsoever on your decision. Thank you very much, Robert. Attorney Burr, uh, Ka, Councilor Darren Court, a question for Mr. Jenkins? Uh, no, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that Burr. given the fact that we wanna postpone it in September, I mean, let's say that hypothetically speaking, it doesn't care, we can also take a vote in regard to we postpone it again. Absolutely. So I Council. think that what we are trying to do is in the sense of fairness to we postpone all three of them for the same time, so right. I don't think there's anything wrong with any of them. I mean, let's say that in September, you know, there's no result come out from the court. We, as, a, as the council body, we can postpone it again. Uh, with that being said, I think it would be uh, better if we just carry it like that as opposed to just, you know, leave it until October like we stated earlier. Thank you, council. And again, I think, I think with uh, Attorney Resnick, our legislative council, we can ask her as well for her opinion. But I think Mr. Jenkins just, there's no harm, no foul, right? I mean, if the judge rules opposed to BRA, it is what it is, it hasn't been conveyed. 
Attorney Burke, do you have something you'd like to offer to us? I do, and I thank you very much. Thank you for being and here. Mr. President, members of the council, I also have the privilege of representing Mr. Carmen uh, in the litigation involving uh, uh, the litigation that was mentioned uh, by one of the counselors. And in fact, the BRA is not the only defendant. Uh, 93 Center LLC is in fact the defendant. So we are a principal in that litigation. And one of the things I think it's important for the uh, uh, council to understand is, yes, we have filed a motion to dismiss. It is now under advisement for the Superior Court, but also the plaintiffs sought an injunction uh, preventing us from seeking our own normal remedies in terms of eviction of the uh, occupants of 93 Center LLC. And the judge made a finding which is very important and telling on the issue when he found that he denied their motion for a preliminary injunction because he found there was no reasonable likelihood of success on the part of the plaintiff. And that is very significant in the legal business. It doesn't guarantee that the judge is in fact going to dismiss the matter uh, as we have asked. But he has specifically identified that he doesn't think the plaintiff has a reasonable likelihood to win the case. And he would not give uh, the preliminary injunction, which I think is very significant. And I know both in terms of Mr. Carmen and also Mr. DeCoste, who I represent, the timing aspect of the financing is extremely critical on the ability of these parties to move forward with these developments which are multi-million dollar developments and multi-tiered in terms of financing. This tie is but one step in the process. There's also an HDIP that is pr provided for through the state, which will create the mezzanine, which will allow them to go to a commercial bank to get financing to do the deal. Without both, the commercial banks are going to walk. This is incredibly important that the Council understand that it has the key to turn the engine in these developments. And if it doesn't, they are going to fail. Thank you. Thank you for that information, Councillor. So we have a motion on the floor, right? Correct. Properly second. Postpone it until September. Yep. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? It carries. Madam Clerk, also, we are going to uh, respectfully demand that Legislative Council be at a FinCom that night. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go on to the next agenda item. Ordered a copy of all legal documents executed between the city and the Brockton 21st Century Corporation related to the transfer of control for these properties to the city and the outstanding promissory note signed by the corporation be provided to the city council. One, a summary of all outstanding contractual agreements, outstanding invoices for services or goods, or any other liability which was the responsibility of the Brockton 21st Century Corporation and which now may be incurred by the city be provided to the city council. Two, if payments from public funds had been made for charges formally required of the corporation, such information shall be provided for, to the City Council. Three, documents and information requested shall be provided within 14 days of the date of this order. Madam, Madam Clerk, we're going to waive the reading of the invited guest, Councilor Fowell. Mr. Chairman, uh, through an email that we received, the 2018 audit for the Brockton 21st Century Corporation has not been completed. Uh, for that reason, I am uh, in a minute going to move that this be postponed to the second FinCom meeting in October. I will tell my colleagues I am concerned that the corporation still employs Mr. Gallerani. He still has access to computer and other records. And frankly, with all of the money that we gave that corporation over many, many years, it would seem to me that that employment should stop and that money should go to the city so that we can make repairs or maintain that facility. But unfortunately, that's not the case, so I move to uh, postpone until the second, second FinCom in October. The motion on the floor is properly second to postpone the agenda item until the second FinCom in October. If you're in favor, raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. It carries. 
postponed to the uh, second FinCom in October. Number eight, please. Resolved that Mayor Moses M. Rodriguez be invited to the Finance Committee meeting of August 19, 2019, to provide an overview of the goals and objectives of the administration and to review his first month in office. Invited Honorable Mayor Moses Rodriguez. Mr. Mayor, thank you for being here. Thank you for Mr. your patience. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for the invitation, members of the council. Uh, aren't, you, aren't you guys lucky I'm not standing up there with all these reconsiderations going back and forth? Uh, no, reconciliations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But Mr. Chairman, I'm here basically just to give you uh, folks an update of uh, people are watching us at home and you folks here in the council. Just a quick update on what has transpired over Thank the you. month and a couple days that I've been mayor here in the city of Brockton. Uh, I came into office uh, with an idea of accomplishing a few things. Uh, to imp one, to basically improve the uh, the customer experience here at City Hall. I mean, uh, people sometimes forget that we're in the business of providing services mm -hmm. uh, to our customers, and our customers are our taxpayers who uh, work diligently to pay their taxes so that we can continue to have these nice and cushy, jo and, uh, cushy jobs that we have here in the city. Uh, also, to um, improve our mar marketing strategies and, and developing some promotional ideas to promote our city, and to continue the uh, momentum of uh, investments uh, here in the city of Brockton and a couple other things that uh, I will delineate as we move forward. As you remember reading uh, in the newspaper, I came up with the idea of uh, reinforcing the dress code here in the city uh, mm -hmm. and have not heard anything negative about it other than a few counselors who basically have called me up with uh, some of the terminology that was used in the article, but um, other than that, uh, the response has been unbelievable from the folks in the community that think that, you know, there's no, absolutely nothing wrong with people looking very uh, professional as they are in the business of conducting business with the community. Uh, another thing that I had noticed once I came in is that, that we had some issues of punctuality. Uh, people coming in whenever they felt like um, people who were supposed to be here at 8.30 uh, were showing up at quarter to nine, nine o'clock, and rolling in. So it basically said, listen, the taxpayers, or the people who are paying our salaries expect us to be here at a certain time, and that's what we must do to do that. Also another chaotic, um, I find it a little chaotic in the sense because in a city that does a lot of business in cash, uh, our building does not have an ATM machine. Uh, so we're in the process of uh, finding a vendor to provide us uh, with an ATM machine so we can place it in this building and, and actually have the, uh, mm -hmm. the ability to provide some cash for folks that are coming in looking to uh, do business. And we're also moving towards um, uh, finger, uh, coming up with a game plan exactly how to institute a POS system, a point of sale um, system where people can actually come in and have the ability to pay for services with a credit card or, mm. or um, a, a, a basically an ATM card. Uh, nowadays, when you look at it, very few people carry cash, but in our city, we have not been able to, uh, to catch up with everybody else. So I'm hoping that within the next few weeks or so, we'll be able to uh, drop a call to you folks and uh, let you know that we're not doing this because it's the right thing to do. Um, as you know, um, in the beginning of the month, we lost our um, executive director of the Board of Health. So we're in the process, and I believe you, will sh you should see an order coming to the council to revamp our Board of Health uh, and create a department that has long been um, absent in this city, which is a department that handles a variety of other health and human services issues. So we're going to be submitting to the council um, later on this week uh, in order to both accept the, uh, the new chapter to convert the Board of Health into a health, into a, uh, a Department of Health and Human Services, and also submit an ordinance for your appreciation as we move forward with this stuff as well. In terms of um, improving our um, strategies of modernizing our city, uh, we just launched this week I know the article in the paper was not the nicest thing in terms of calling our $80,000 website, but this city needed a new website. And, uh, and I remember going back a couple of years ago and discussing uh, during budget hearings 
you know, how chaotic and antiquated our, our website was. So I don't know if you had an opportunity to look at it. I know that Council Farwell has approached me with a couple little changes that we are in the process of making, but at least it's more appealing to the eye. You know, it's more uh, visually more uh, in, uh, appealing, and it also provides a greater service to our community, and, um, and, and hopefully, as we continue to uh, improve it, it should be uh, a lot nicer for people to use and get the benefits from it. It also is very inclusive in the sense because I don't know if you remember what our website looked like in the past. It didn't have the, the connection between the police department, the school department, and the fire department as it should have. So that's all now under one umbrella so that people can just go to our site and get all that information from them. I don't know if you were able to, uh, if you got your uh, restaurant guide in the mail. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that the city did this uh, because it also helps in the promotional of our city. I mean, I sat here during the, uh, the initial phases uh, of the discussions that I, the, from, from the investors that were here, and people are always talking about how little Brockton has. But in reality, I think the issue is that we don't do a very good job in talking about how much we do have. And I think one of the things that we did with this, uh, with this restaurant guide is basically talking about the number of great restaurants that we have in this community. And people have been goo goo gaga over it in the sense because I think it's, uh, it's basically showcasing the great restaurants that we have in our community. And hopefully uh, with that, uh, a lot more people will start uh, basically utilizing the restaurants that we have and stay away from some of the other uh, restaurants outside of Rockton so <laughs> they can stay and do uh, a local thing. We also have, we're putting together, um, we did this under the Harrington administration or we called it a block party, but we're actually calling this the uh, Shoe City Festival. And we've got a variety of other people involved in uh, showcasing our shoe history here in the city. But it's going to be basically an A-block party type of uh, atmosphere to bring people into the downtown area. Uh, it's going to be held in October, October 5th, which it shouldn't be too bad weather-wise. It's, it's going to be a little coolish, but, you know, October is still the fall, so it should be okay for our folks. And we're going to hold it right behind in the old bat station, close off that street, and have some real fun stuff, uh, fun family stuff uh, and inviting the entire city to come down and help us celebrate what's great about this city. Uh, in terms of continuing the momentum as far as the um, investment in, in the city is concerned, uh, recently we announced the rolling out of the, uh, the restaurant infrastructure grant through the BRA. Uh, this is actually because we talk about bringing restaurants in, bringing restaurants in, but people sometimes don't realize how expensive it is to get a restaurant up and running. So this is actually a grant program that the uh, Mayor Carpenter had talked about uh, during his um, State of the City address. In terms of providing funding for uh, individuals who are willing to invest in restaurants, this pays for uh, the infrastructure that goes into the restaurant. So it makes it a lot easier for people to invest in that particular thing. And this is being done with a grant from the BRA. We're also um, hosting a, um, a Builders of Color um, tour uh, in, in our city on the 23rd of this month, a couple days actually, uh, to bring in developers from the outside of the areas, developers of color, because uh, as you can tell sometimes a lot of the developing in this city are being done from folks that are not of color. Uh, so it's nice to uh, invite some of those other investors to come down and take a look at our city and see what we can actually have to offer everyone in this community. Uh, we're going to be uh, doing a ribbon cutting on November, uh, on November, on September the 11th uh, at 75 Commercial Street. This is the, uh, the old um, DTA office. And they're going to be introducing 24 market rate units. And I know Council Borgard kind of likes that market rate <laughs> units. Uh, and this is a project that was actually, uh, uh, believe it or not, it was made possible through the Thai program. Yeah, it's kind of interesting when I first heard of the tie, I'm, you know, since my whole, everybody wear a tie at City Hall, I'm saying, gee, that's, they named a program after my tie thing, but 
you know, I am actually uh, uh, proud of the fact that, you know, um, this development is actually going online um, on, the, on the 11th of next month, and it should be a beautiful thing. You're all invited to come. Uh, this is going to be a joint effort. So mayor, councilor, everybody, we should just kind of join in. Uh, also, 121 Main Street should be um, rolling within this week. I think you're going to start seeing some uh, shovels in the ground, and not necessarily the ones that we use for the, for the uh, groundbreaking, but real shovel. So uh, by the middle of the week or so, you should, you should be able to see some uh, movement in that piece of property there. I know Council Monaghan is lo really looking forward to that particular one, but the toys will be coming. Uh, to, to start the project. As far as new priorities, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, you know how I feel about the census. Uh, census 20 is around the corner. Uh, 2020 census is around the corner. And I see this as an all, all hands are in into this particular effort. It's all boots on the ground, all hands in, all people pushing. Because the city of Brockton has lost millions of dollars in federal and other funding. So this is going to be a joint effort. I told the, the folks in the police department that the police needs to get involved in it. When they get a 911 call and that gets resolved, they need to tell them, oh, by the way, get ready because the census are coming. The same thing with the fire department, the same thing with the school department. We're actually going to be coming in front of you very soon to ask for some um, reallocation of funds that we have. We're looking to hire somebody to be a census coordinator within the licensing, um, within the, 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 the building itself to kind of help us coordinate this effort because it's kind of hard to rely on volunteers and people who are doing this, but if we focus on getting someone in the uh, elections commission in the sense to help us uh, coordinate this effort. We have some funding that we just have to move around in the sense so it's not going to cost us any additional money from what we had appropriated in the budget. Uh, but it's, it's something that the city needs. And the only way we're going to be able to do this is by working together to get this stuff done. Uh, we just extended the uh, Brewster contract. I don't know if you guys saw that in the, uh, in the newspaper. Uh, it's a good contract for the city. It's a, for a lot more money than we actually had signed previously, so that's why we took the opportunity to sign that and just kind of secure that funding for the next five years so we will have the funds that we need to do what we need with the uh, ambulance receipts. Uh, as you know, um, we had uh, some issues, at least from the council standpoint, in terms of the, uh, the marijuana uh, host agreements, the way they were basically conducted in the past. Uh, some of us felt that it was not the fairest of the processes, so we opened it back up again and focused on the economic empowerment folks. And to date, we have received somewhere around 14 ap applicants that we are currently reviewing, and then uh, we will look into providing some uh, uh, community host agreements to them. And then it's up to them to basically make it up to the state and convince the state folks to, uh, to continue the license. We are um, we're setting up a, um, a meeting uh, because the issue that, and I noticed that the folks were here earlier talking about the homelessness, the folks wandering the streets in our city, um, everybody can see that that actually is a problem in our community. Uh, but you know what, uh, being mayor now for a month and a couple days, I've noticed that in talking to the individuals across the city, the homelessness is not a city of Brockton only issue, but it's a city of Brockton problem. Mm -hmm. And we must come together to figure out exactly how we're going to resolve this issue. Because when you talk to the individuals out in the streets, a good 70% of, of the folks that you talk to come from communities other than Brockton. Yes. They're coming from the outside of the community, but it's becoming a Brockton problem. So I'm actually proposing a meeting with, um, with some town administrators from our surrounding communities since the uh, folks that are coming in are coming from the various communities, we're going to sit down and come together with some sort of uh, a solution to deal with the problems that we're facing. Again, as I said, it's an issue that's not Brockton's, but it's a Brockton problem. And speaking of that, we're also going to pull together some stakeholders, people in the community that 
agencies, churches, uh, people in the various social service agencies for a quick meeting uh, next Wednesday at the uh, War Memorial on the 28th. Uh, and it is basically specifically to discuss the issues of the homelessness uh, in our community and the issues that we're facing on a day-to-day -day basis that it's keeping people away from our dream of developing our downtown. So I invite you all to come to the, on the 28th at the War Memorial at 6 p.m. so we can come together and come up with some ways of uh, looking at solutions to deal with these issues. Um, I, don't think, I don't think one person can do it. I don't think the council can do it. I don't think the mayor can do it. But if we all come together and um, pull our resources together, our minds together, we might come up with a, with a solution to deal with this issue. We've also initiated um, <coughs> the, um, the issue that's a thorn on your side, Mr. Chairman, and mine as well, Aquaria. <laughs> we, um, we have scheduled a meeting with Aquaria for later on this week. To, uh, to sit down and have a real conversation and how to resolve the issues that continue to, to be a thorn on our side. So I will uh, uh, perhaps make a phone call soon after that meeting just to inform you how well or how poorly it went, but I'm hoping that it actually goes well uh, because we had had some initial discussions to, uh, of some things that we wanted done. So I'm hoping that uh, that's gonna happen and we'll have some good news to uh, offer you and the community real soon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for that. Uh, Absolutely. Your side is all messed up because I know from the th all the thorns <laughs> on your side. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my first uh, couple days in the office, um, I actually received a, a visit by the uh, Lieutenant Governor who came down and offered uh, to continue to support the city, to continue to uh, <coughs> offer their uh, financial support to the city as well. And one of the things that she asked me, hey, do you, want so do you have something specific that you want to ask and you know, another one of my, my thorns is the uh, two-way traffic in the downtown area. And currently we have the state uh, looking at ways or possibly uh, of helping us in, in uh, securing some funding that we might be able to move some of that, uh, that thorn forward. Uh, I also asked them to see if they can help us with some funding so we can develop two soccer fields uh, in the community. And these are soccer fields, not necessarily waiting for these little mini grants that come down the pipeline, but to actually have a, a, let's say, an artificial turf field times two that we can actually have in this community as other communities have had. And I am positively sure that within the next couple weeks, three weeks, four weeks, we are gonna come up with some sort of a game plan to, to make sure that these, uh, these do come to fruition. Um, and this is just an invite to you all, um, if you can make it to Prova uh, this week on Thursday. We have some African dancers and musicians that are going to be there as well. This is something totally different and very pleasing to the eye. So um, I'm leaving here an invitation to you all to come and enjoy some, uh, some stuff from Africa that I think you will you truly enjoy. Uh, because we gotta, we gotta show and showcase our diversity in this city in a way that is inviting and appealing to the eye. And with this, I'm hoping that others will see what we're doing here and continue to support and like our community. But again, I, uh, I'm open to any questions that you might have. Uh-oh, uh I'm, uh, <coughs> the Gantley building. <laughs> the Gantley building. Well, that was one thing. That was one thing. <laughs> that will, um, it has been pushed back a little bit in terms of the demo of that particular property, but now we're looking at the first week, I believe, in September is what they told us that they should be moving forward. And we basically have told them that, you know, we're getting a little tired of this whole delay, delay, delay process, and they need to start moving with that as well, too. So. Go ahead. Counselor. Thank you. No, I was going to ask about code enforcement because I don't believe I'm the only <coughs> one that's concerned about that. Well, uh, you know, I think uh, you'll be happy to know that um, you will be getting something in terms of an, an ordinance that I will be sending uh, forward uh, to create a whole new way of, um, of enforcing our codes in the city. I think I ha we have some ideas, and I had some discussions with the uh, Council Fowell as well. 
in terms of um, introducing this, uh, this new concept, I think that you'll be happy to hear. And as I have more information, I'll share that with you as we go along. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Castro, please. So that's all you did on your summer vacation. Is that <laughs> what you're telling us? Isn't that good? <laughs> Isn't that good? That's why I'm sounding a little hoarse. I mean, I'm not sleeping all that well, and it's been kind of, no, just kidding. It's just, uh, it, it's been a busy, a busy month. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's enjoyable. Um, we're getting some things done, and I'm hoping that we're going to get a lot more done. Um, there's also the issue of the Lopes case that I will uh, probably have a conversation with you folks uh, in an executive session because I think it's worth talking about. Uh, but we'll talk that uh, when that time comes. Thank you. Thank you. Council Fowell, please, for the mayor. Yes, he, you and I have uh, <coughs> humorously talked about how it's been quite an education for you in just a month and a couple of days. I, I know the Navy is an, uh, not just a job, it's an adventure, and you spent six years in the Navy, but uh, I have to tell you from, from what I've heard in the community, you've, you've come in with kind of a calm, steady hand, and I, I, think that's, mm -hmm. I think that speaks well of you, but I also think it set the right tone for the city. Um, the one issue I wanted to mention to you tonight, and you, you really just sat through it, uh, <clears throat> the, the issue of being business friendly but fair to our residents mm -hmm. and recognizing mm -hmm. our financial constraints, it, it, it's a complicated one. Yeah. And I hope that if you choose to do so, you'll weigh in on any recommendations you have for the three that we have now kicked over to September. But I also think that it might be helpful, as other communities have done, is to have something on our web page Mm -hmm. and indicate that, that Brockton uses tax increment financing and tax increment exemptions, but here are the criteria we look at. In other words, be a little more right. proactive reaching out to the developers so they might know some of the questions that they could reasonably anticipate when they come in with, with a project. You know, number of jobs developed, uh, size of the project and square feet, number of residential units, things like that and uh, and I think that would go a long way towards what Councilor Monaghan mentioned is that uh, again we we want to be open for business but we want to be fair to our residents so if you could just think about those two issues no absolutely uh, yeah I think uh, while I was sitting here I'm thinking what you said about the the poor resident poor resident that buys a three family or a two family he or she isn't getting any any breaks uh, and sometimes we uh, I know what we want to do in terms of uh, business development, but I think we got to be smart about it as well. And I, um, you know, perhaps that that line needs to be a little steeper, you know, as far as the the balancing of things. And because I honestly feel that we can we can accomplish it both ways, you know, we can attract businesses, but at the same time, you know, do we need to do 20 years on every single one that comes on the pipeline? Perhaps not. You know, we, that that's something we need to kind of look at. And it shouldn't be the first thing that we sell either. You know, it shouldn't be, look, it's 20 years, you know, so I think uh, we need to start negotiating things, you know, start out with 10. If they 10 isn't good enough, go to 15. And then if 15 isn't good enough, perhaps get to 20. But maybe we shouldn't start right off, right off but 20 right off the bat. And I think that graphic needs to be a little steeper in some instances. I, I agree. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for the mayor? So, Mayor, I just want to thank you. Um, I mean, we've had conversations quite a bit, and, and uh, I think what Councilor Fowler said, you know, in light of the untimely passing of Mayor Carpenter, I mean, you've come in and you've, you've provided that, that steering of the wheel of the ship, so thank you for what you're doing. And, you know, this is an open communication, and as, as the Mayor had said, it's a partnership, right? It's the mm -hmm. Mayor and the Council and the School Committee working together, so thank you for being here. Who, who filed the resolve on this? Okay. Who's that guy? Council Fowell, thank you for doing that as well. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, move to recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion made is properly seconded. Favor recommendation back to the council. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you oppose, raise your hand. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. On that. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, the last agenda item, please. Mm. Resolved to invite a representative from National Grid to address the concerns of the community regarding the recent manhole cover explosions. Invited Joe Cardinal, manager, National Grid. Who filed this motion? 
I did. Result. Remember, it was a yep. follow-up, and um, the mayor's here. Maybe he's had a yak with them and might be able to fill us in on something. I mean, we know they're working downtown. That that I can attest to. But, uh, well, I, I, I uh, Mr. Chairman, I think I had um, submitted a, you know, when I was still at Council Press, uh, a no, yeah, little email that was yes. that had come to us in terms of all the work that they actually have done in the downtown, and if you could see that there's a. The manholes are all vented as well as they can, and the work continues in the downtown area. I think they're progressively doing what they uh, had promised to do for us, and I'll uh, I'll make sure I make a phone call this week just to get an update, and then I'll uh, I'll share that with you all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Contain a motion. Yeah, uh, to, to move. Uh, to recommend favor favor recommendation back yes. to council. Thank Second. you. The second made in favor. Please raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. It carries. Uh, Councilors, I want to thank you. It was a, it was a long night. Um, and I am, I am going to, in my capacity as president, I am going to um, uh, invite Shannon and ask Shannon to be here. Mm -hmm. You know, typically she's here for council meetings, not for FinCom. Um, but when we have FinCom matters, if it's uh, TIFs or ties or age dips or any of that, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask her to be here. Uh, I think that that is the right thing to do. So I will uh, direct her that tomorrow. Anything else before us? Any personal privilege, Councillor? Yeah, thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, yes, just uh, two quick things here. Um, registering to vote uh, next Wednesday, August 28th, is the last day. And if I have it correctly, they're open till 8 o'clock that night. They are still looking for poll workers. And um, also, a um, group of people out of the mayor's office have mobilized an event for a Sunday, August 25th, at the Gilmore School from 11 to 4. And apparently, um, for those um, preparing for school, if you hadn't had your hair cut, apparently you can get your due done, and you can get ready um, with uh, with backpacks, and also have a good time before um, you start, the, you know, the, the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else before us? Seeing none. Have a good evening. It's adjourned.